Arena, making it a bit easier for you. And I would say starting last summer when a couple of very high profile players did not want to come back to this team, and another high profile player this winter was clearly unhappy, said he lost his swagger. Is there some reconstruction work to be done with this team in making it a team that players want to be part of? Well, that's, you know, that that's exactly it. I mean, I think when I said when I came here, it only took me a couple weeks. I wanted to be a part of it. I want people that want to be a part of the Calgary Flames and that want to be here, not just coming here to get a contract and get the money. That that doesn't interest me at all. I want them to come to be a part of this and do something special here. You know, as far as, you know, Johnny leaving, I think a little bit, I was, it was a learning thing for me. I, I was hoping Johnny was going to come back. I thought Johnny was going to come back. But I don't think I would let that happen again. Well, Brad Pascoe and I did the exit meetings with the Wranglers. And, you know, I think there's a, I don't want to just keep going through names because I don't think that's fair to all of them. But we said there's going to be an opportunity next year. Come to training camp and earn a spot. Take a jersey. You know, no one's going to give you a jersey in this league. I mean, you have to take it. And I truly believe that. And I said, you know, you have to do the work yourself, though. And that's, that's the only way this is going to work. But there is going to be a chance. And I think the guys, Felt like they, you know, that's all they've ever wanted, to know that there's some chances. I think in years past, as we've gotten close to training camp, we've filled up roster spots, uh, you know, with veteran players. And, and I think my goal is to, to leave some, let these guys battle it out and fight for it. What makes you a little bit different than Brad, maybe in your approaches? You, you kind of were his undersight for a long time, but are there any tangible ways that maybe you two see the, the game differently or approach management differently? You know, I think the one thing probably would be the ability to bring in young players. I'm going to leave roster spots. I'm going to give opportunity for those young players to play. But Brad did a great – I mean, what Brad really did well was he knew the league. He knew what was going on, who was available, trades, you know. So I, I am going to follow in his thing. I, I want to know what's happening out there and be a part of it. This team uh, right now, um, how close do you believe that they are to contending? And is that the way forward? Well, I think the one biggest thing of the general manager is asset management. So we have seven unrestricted free agents. I kind of feel like I know where those guys are at, but that was as assistant GM. That was those conversations. This would be different conversations. So I do think I want to get where they're at. You know, obviously we can't go into a season with seven UFAs. It just doesn't make sense. We got to we got to make sure we do it right for the Calgary Flames. If the goal is the Stanley Cup, how much faith do you have in the core as constructed to get you to that point? Well, I think we're going to change the core a little bit. Not the core pieces, but I think we're going to add some youth in the lineup. You know, like Don said, my big thing has been drafting, watching players, you know, and what I've watched and learned is you need young players in the team. You need that excitement. You need that you know, what they bring day in and day out. And it's nothing against the older players, but when you watch the league, you see what these kids are doing at 15, 16, 17 years old. I can't even imagine doing that. And so, you know, you have to bring that into your team. You have to give them a chance. What up, Sea of Red? You're listening to Into the Flames, a Calgary Flames fan podcast. Your home for all things Flames and updates around the NHL. With your hosts, Raja Burry and Noah Eppleston. Into the Flames, new episodes every Sunday. How's it going, Sea of Red? It's just me today. May 19th, right? Casual Friday of a long weekend. Frank Saravalli basically scares the living shit out of us when he posts that flames are in final stages of their GM search and that four external candidates had visited the city for in-person interviews. Dave Nonis, Stan Bowman, and Mark Bergevin. Garlic! <laughs> huh? Huh? A mirror! Holy water! A crucifix! Fuck it! But then he did say that the odds-on favorite was Craig Conroy. On the 21st, casual Sunday, at around 10 a.m., Dave Nonis's second cousin, Darren Drieger, tweets out that Craig Conroy will be named the GM of the Flames. Initial list had close to 40 candidates, according to Solemn Valji. They also consulted with NHL Commissioner Gary Bettman and Colin Campbell as well. Fun fact, Craig Conroy is actually the oldest general manager in regards to age when hired. So there you have it. 
Craig Conroy is this club's eighth general manager in franchise history. As you know, he started as Feaster's special assistant in 2011, and then he's been an assistant general manager since 2014. I love Conroy, and I'm obviously rooting for him. So what's the rest of the staff looking like? Don Maloney, president of Hockey Ops. Craig Conroy, eighth general manager in franchise history. Let's go. Dave Nonis, senior vice president of hockey operations and assistant general manager. Promotions also came in for Brad Pascal and Chris Snow. God bless him. Brad Pascal is now the vice president of hockey operations and assistant general manager. And Chris Snow is the vice president of data analytics and keeps his title as assistant GM. So what are my thoughts on this thing? Craig Conroy, he's now responsible for my mental health. Absolutely. What I loved about the conference is that he just might be as passionate as the fans are. Just absolutely radiating with excitement, smiling ear to ear. Like, that's the type of energy I can get behind. That one presser sold me more than anything Brad True Living ever said in nine years. You have the salt and pepper that CSEC obviously wanted included, but Conor's answers were at least assembling an outline of a plan. He called out Brad True Living a good number of times. Let's talk about it. I think the biggest fear that was on most of our minds was, okay, he's been under True Living how similar are they? Liz Presser gave us that answer. They're quite significantly different from each other. He was not afraid to straight up dig Brad's way of doing business. And you can tell there's a significant change in mindset between the two. And that has me filled with faith. Yes, the easy sell is giving us a former player that we all adore to go and run this club. But he actually sounds like he knows what it takes to be a GM. He said all the right things. Now I just want to see the plan in action. He straight up called out Brad for filling up the lineup with PTOs on Flamestock. Like that made me so happy. Everyone always likes to talk about how these veteran guys came in when Daryl came in. Okay, so Brandon Bolig. Remember when we lost Paul Byron because we wanted to make room for Brandon Bolig in the lineup and then he went and scored 30 in Montreal a year later. Remember that? Tobias Reader, Zach Ronaldo, Joachim Nordstrom. The list goes on. It's unbelievable how I already trust him more than brad after one presser he hasn't even done anything and my level of faith is up there why there was transparency pure flat out honesty no political bullshit or analogies right like maybe it's because i'm around corporate people a lot but in my view digging the last guy that did absolutely nothing to put your organization forward nice guy 100 percent had a vision no executed a vision no as you Take the helm. It's quite literally the biggest boss move of an introduction you could possibly apply towards a vote of confidence. Light the lamp during the NHL playoffs with DraftKings Sportsbook. Right now, new customers can make a $5 bet and score $150 in bonus bets instantly. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and sign up with code THPN. New customers can make a $5 playoff hockey bet and score $150 in bonus bets instantly. That's code THPN. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. In Massachusetts, call 800-327-5050 or visit gamblinghelplinema.org. In New York, call 8778-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY at 467-369. In Kansas, call 1-800-522-4700 on behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort. Must be 21 years of age or older in most eligible states, but age varies by jurisdiction. Eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for offer details. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details and state-specific responsible gambling resources. Let's talk about some of the things he said. I'm ready to accept this challenge and promise our fans that our team will do the work required to make them proud on the journey to deliver a championship. We're going to make some changes at the core. I think we're going to add some youth to the lineup. We've always talked about it. It's something we definitely want to explore. This is referencing Jerome McGinley's involvement in the organization. For those of you wondering why Jerome McGinley might not be taking a full-time role just right away, one reason is he's already committed to coaching at the Rank Hockey Academy. And it's because Joe McGinley is 15. He hasn't turned 16 yet. Once he turns 16, he can go play for the Edmonton Oil Kings. Also, shout out to the Calgary Hitmen for passing on him. How could you? Eventually, Jerome McGinley will be joining this organization, and that makes me so hyped. Regarding the seven pending unrestricted free agents that we're going to have to start dealing with, Conroy headlined asset management and building through the draft. He said, we can't go into next season with seven UFAs. Thank God. Like, the thing that I find unbelievable is the fact that 
Craig didn't really say anything out of the ordinary. He straight up said what the job description of a general manager should be. And we were watching it like, wow. Like we were all Owen Wilson because we haven't had that here. Good luck, Toronto. Connor also, I guess, slighted the whole um, Daryl Brad relationship with this comment as well. That's what I'm saying. They were subtle jabs, but they were there. We need to work together. We can't be at odds. He's got to make this an environment that's a fun place to be. In regards to hiring a new head coach. Now, who will that head coach be? I hope it's Andrew Brunette. You can go back and check our video within the Dome. I would assume maybe an internal candidate, though, just because we did internally promote Conroy. I can see them doing that as well you know, safest route. I think the biggest part of being a general manager is asset management. Craig Conroy, Roger Bury. Just that that was an office reference for, for you guys. But what I thought really stood out was the fact that he said, I wouldn't let what happened to Johnny Goudreau walking to free agency happen again. It's clear that he understands what needs to be done. And I guess this summer is going to be very telling, especially with what the team does with Lindholm. Now, regarding Elias Lindholm, he did say, I do know what Elias was thinking prior, and now I want to see where he's at. That leads me to believe that he wanted out. And I feel like Craig might be convincing him to stay. But what we do with Lindholm is going to determine the trajectory, I think, of his tenure or what he's going to have to work with throughout it. As much as there are some people that, you know, want to be cynical about it, it is a canny hiring because it does invoke nostalgia. 04 is the club's greatest modern memory, which is funny because a lot of people on Twitter are saying that it's the worst thing that ever happened in the franchise. Huh. It puts an incredibly positive and personable guy at the helm. I mean, Craig Conroy is just awesome. Absolute. I love this guy, man. Like, I, I'm so excited to see him put his touch on this team. I'm really rooting for him. This hire was clearly designed also to take away the sour taste that last season left. Immediately, Conroy comes to the helm and fans are like, oh my God, we're bought back in. Listen, my faith is back. I have confidence in Craig Conroy that he understands the business because all I picked up from how he, you know, introduced himself in his introductory presser, talked about all the things that are required out of a GM. And that is all we need. That is already an upgrade over what Brad Tree Living gave us. Now, Connor is going to have two tasks as general manager. One, focus on creating a deep prospect pool, developing them and securing them. No more of this three-year bridge deal shit. I miss you, Matthew Kachuk. Sorry, I need a moment. You, and you got to create a culture and environment where players want to play and want to stay. He said he doesn't give a shit about players wanting to come here and you know, play for a pretty penny. They're, they're going to want to be here. And there's no point in drafting and developing stars if they're just going to bolt based off of your incompetence. And that's what happened when Brad True Living was at the helm. Matthew Kachuk wanted an eight-year deal. That's well documented. He wanted something long-term. But no, Michael Frolik was way too important, so we couldn't keep a freaking heart candidate in our franchise player. But, you know, he wasn't going to stay, right? Yeah, keep, keep, keep being delusional. But yeah, those are going to be his... Top two tasks, create a robust prospect pool, develop that prospect pool, and then create a culture and environment where players want to stay. Kids that you draft, the kids that are homegrown, you build the team around them, not incoming free agents looking for a pretty penny. I think what I love too is that Conroy is just legitimately passionate about this city and this franchise. He intrinsically wants to win here and it just radiates. I loved his introductory pressure. I thought it was unbelievable. Now, all the good things that he said, I want them backed up. It did not take long for him to shed that label of, you know, Brad's regime. A, a desire for younger players to enter the lineup, better asset management and improved relations between manager, head coach, maintaining relationships, open communication, transparency with players. Those are all things that doomed us. All of that shit. 2019 onward, right? Think about it. 2019 onward. This team had no semblance of asset management. And again, Brad Living, great guy. I'm sure he's a great guy. And I can tell he's a great guy. I mean, I watched this guy for nine years. Run my team. I am just so happy we have a fresh voice. And Toronto, I'm telling you, if you're going to go from Kyle Dubas to Brad Living, you're in for one. This fan base, we have every reason to feel jaded coming off of this last season. I can understand why some people would still be... Kind of like, you know, show me, show me the results, which is 100% accurate. I, I have faith in Craig, but I want to see the work be done. And this is 
probably the most defining offseason we're ever going to have. Even more defining than last summer because you have seven guys that are core parts of your team right now that are heading into unrestricted free agency a year out. And if Craig is as serious about young players and asset management as he says he is, we're going to be seeing some serious moves get done this summer, and I'm excited. I'm excited to see his take and evaluate all that. At the very least, Conroy did say all the right things that would at least inspire hope, and that's how I'm feeling. I'm very excited to see him put a stamp on this club because I genuinely love the guy. I'm rooting for him. You know, we only spent the last nine years middling and progressively becoming more of a joke since 2019. We literally had to lose two franchise players because of our own incompetence to clue in about how to run a hockey team. And I know that Craig Conroy doubled down on that in his pressure. I'm very excited to see that proactivity. Don't let guys have the choice to walk. Show them you value them. Johnny Goudreau and Matthew Kachuk do not feel valued here. Show these new guys that you are willing to run through a wall to keep them here and that they are appreciated here. The last regime did not do that. There was no sign of appreciation. I do not care about others' opinions on the matter. It's the freaking truth. If you've paid attention, the honesty and transparency is going to go a long way. Straight up digging the last guy who did absolutely nothing to push your organization forward multiple times in your introduction, whether that was on the Flames Talk podcast, whether that was in the presser, whether it was on Frank Saravalli's pod, that's quite literally the biggest boss move of an introduction you could have when you're trying to inspire confidence. Part that kind of threw me off a bit, though, was the fun. It's just the PTSD from Jeff Ward. Maybe he's right. You want to show up to work every day, at least knowing that the guys around you have your back, that you guys are all on the same page. And I think Craig is going to build that sort of culture, and I'm excited to see it. I don't know why Dave Nonis was brought in. This is the guy that signed Joffrey Lupul, Clarkson... Give Faneuf a seven by seven, you know, that, that, that they've known is right. And I get that they're bringing him in because, you know, he's been a general manager in a Canadian market twice, but um, the, the root word being good in front of that, I don't know how um, you could stretch that out. I'm sure Dave is a great guy. I'm just very confused about the hire. It literally just looks like a hire to appease ownership, but I hope to be proven wrong. And, you know, I'm, hoping for the best right i mean that's all you can do as a fan you can just hope that you know this organization finally has a grip on reality and i think craig conroy is going to have that sort of grip so yeah if you guys like what you listen to this is the first time i do this by myself i can understand if it's a bit of a choppy listen and i hope i don't have to do any of these again but in the meantime if you guys liked our content feel free to hit the like subscribe button. Don't hit unsubscribe if you hated this video and you were already subscribed prior. I'm doing my best here. Yeah, hit that like button, hit subscribe. I'll just end it off with Craig Conroy's best quote. This is home. Thanks for listening.